dear students so we are starting with uh, next part of this unit number 1 uh, that is energy conversion devices so in this video we are going to see the first energy conversion device that is pump or pumps so we'll see this different types of pumps and what is the function of pumps what are the application of pumps that we will see in this videos so first we will see what is mean by pump so if you see a pump it is a device which moves fluid now the fluid it may be a uh, liquid fuel uh, fluids or it may be a gases fluids or sometimes it may be a solid fluids like slurry slurries so pump it is a device which moves fluids by mechanically action by using a mechanical action and we can say that pump is used to convert electrical energy into hydraulic energy so electric energy of motor is converted into a hydraulic energy of uh, water or we can say fluid so the pumps they are classified into three major groups according to the method of uh, it uh, they use to move the fluids it may be direct lift then displacement types and gravity types of pumps so the pumps uh, operates by some mechanism and there are two types of mechanism one is a rotary mechanism and another one is a reciprocating mechanism so by these two types of mechanisms pumps can operate so it is called as a uh, reciprocating pumps or it is also uh, another type will be a rotary pump so pumps operate by a mechanism and it consumes energy to perform mechanical work of moving the fluid so pumps operates via many energy sources which includes manual operations electricity that is by using electric motor by using engines that is ic engine internal combustion engines then the pumps can operate by using wind power and these pumps are comes in many sizes from microscopic pump which is used for medical application to large industrial pumps so the size can be varies from microscopic to macroscopic to large industrial pump also uh generally the pump produces the movement of liquid or a flow it does not generate pressure directly pump does not generate pressure directly it produces the fluid or liquid to move or to flow so pump produces the flow necessary for development of process so the pump not does not generate directly pressure but it produces a flow which is necessary for development of pressure which is the function of resistance to fluid flow in the system so pressure has a function it offers resistance to fluid flow so pumps uh, typically we can say the energy conversion takes place place in pumps it is through electric motor electrical energy is given to the pump this electrical energy is converted into a mechanical energy by rotation of the shaft or impeller this mechanical energy then converted into a kinetic energy and this kinetic energy again we uh, deliver this water or we can say liquid or fluid in a tank so again that kinetic energy is converted into a potential energy so a definition we can say that a uh, pump it is a device which converts the mechanical energy into a hydraulic energy now hydraulic energy it is either kinetic energy or it is either a potential energy so a pump it is a device which converts this mechanical energy into an hydraulic energy so 
this is all about the introduction of pump now we will see the different classification of pumps so pumps are classified into mainly two types of pumps one is roto dynamic pumps and second one is a positive displacement type of pump and this positive displacement type of pump they are mainly classified into reciprocating pump and rotary pump so the example of uh, this rotary pump it is the centrifugal pump and reciprocating we have single acting pump and double acting pump based on uh, number of cylinder or number of strokes will be there again this uh, rotodynamic pump they are classified into uh, mixed type of pump uh, then centrifugal type of pump and axial pump this rotary is not a centrifugal pump is not a rotary type of pump it is a rotodynamic pump so rotary is the rotary action will be takes place in case of gear pump and all that pump vane pump we having this positive displacement type of pump. so mixed pump centrifugal pump and axial pump now this centrifugal pump it has a multi stage pumping or it is single stage pump then this single stage it having n suction or it may be having double suction so these are the classification of the pumps the pumps are mainly having two types that is roto dynamic and positive displacement type of pump now we will see one of the pump in this uh pump energy conversion device pump so first type of pump it is the centrifugal pump that is uh most common use a pump it is called as a centrifugal pump so we will see first what is meant by working principle of this uh, centrifugal pump and then we will see construction and working of this centrifugal pump mm -hmm. so this centrifugal pump is works on the reverse principle of radial inward flow type reaction turbine so it is a reversal principle work principle than that of the radial flow type reaction turbine so the pressure at periphery will high and due to which uh, is high due to the centrifugal force of the water and this centrifugal force is subjected on water due to forced vertex motion so water is having this vertex motion so this water is flowing from this impeller and casing parts and causing the vertex motion so that motion is forced vertex motion so when uh, generally in centrifugal pump the water enters in axial direction so this is the inlet of the water so this direction is your axial direction axial direction so as like this so this is the suction so water intake in this axial direction that is along the axis of shaft or rotor and the water leaves in radial direction so water discharge in this radial direction so it will moves along this casing part and it will leaves in radial direction so water enter in the pump centrifugal pump in axial direction that is along the axis of pump or uh, along the axis of rotor or along the axis of shaft and leaves in radial direction through the delivery pipe the pressure in this pump it is directly proportional to the square of radius as a rise in pressure head so the pressure is directly proportional to the square of radius so due to high pressure head at periphery water can be lifted to higher level 
So because of this pressure head, because uh, the water gets sucked through the suction stroke, it will move along this impeller when the impeller gets rotated through electric motor. It produces this vortex motion and it develops a pressure and this pressure giving the high head, high pressure head and because of this high pressure head, the water is lifting from low level head to higher level. So this is the working principle uh, behind this centrifugal pump. Now we'll see uh, construction of centrifugal pump. So if you see, there are uh, main components or parts of this centrifugal pump. They are impeller. So here this part is called as an impeller. Second part is casing. So outside impeller, this part, this enclosed part is called as a casing part up to this delivery wall. This part is called as a casing. This part is impeller, which is a rotating part. Casing is not rotating part. This impeller is rotating part. Next, we have suction pipe and suction wall. So we have this, this pipe uh, from one end is connected to the impeller and another end is dipped into a water or we can say sump. So that pipe is called as a suction pipe. So this pipe, it is a suction pipe where the water is flows inside the impeller. So this is the suction pipe. This wall is called as a suction wall or a suction flange is there. Then we have another type, uh, another part, it is a foot valve. So this is the foot wall. Okay, this part is called as a foot wall. It is a non-returning type of wall. So water is only flow in upward direction. There is no movement of water in downward direction. And next part is your strainer. So below this foot wall, we have a strainer part. So this part is your strainer. Then uh, we have delivery pipe and delivery wall. So this is the delivery wall. And we have a delivery pipe where water can deliver to the overhead tank or where the application is required. We can pump this water. Now, there are two types of height is there. One is suction height, HS, and another one is delivered height. And this total height, that is HS plus HD, it is called as a water head, H, capital H. So it is suction height, it is from uh, water level in the sum to the eye of impeller. And delivery height, it is from uh, eye of impeller to the water level or discharge level of this tank. So these are the main components and the construction of this centrifugal pump. So this is the eye of impeller. It is a shaft. So this eye of impeller, uh, the shaft is connected to electrical motor by using a coupling. And this is the center line or uh, line of the pump. So if you see, Water enters in this pump at axial direction and it will lose in radial direction. So like this, it will lose in radial direction. Because of rotating, it will lose in radial direction. So water enters in axial direction and lose in radial direction. Now we will see the function of each component one by one. So first component, it is the impeller part. So impeller, it is a backward curve vein. It is a backward curve vein. So these are the vanes or we can say a bucket. So it is a backward curve vanes. So this curve uh, impeller, 
with this backward curve vents it is mounted on a shaft so here is the hole so shaft is fixed in this hole and this shaft is again coupled to the electric motor shaft and when uh, the motor gets rotates the shaft get rotated and this impeller part will get rotated so thus impeller it is a, a rotating part of centrifugal component a uh, uh, centrifugal pump now if you see a uh, centrifugal pump it has two types of impellers uh, one is open impeller and another one is closed impellers so this is a example of open impeller and this is the example of closed impeller so this is the first part that is the impeller now we have another part it is called as a casing so a casing it is a air tight passage which surrounds the pump so this part is a air tight passage which surrounds the pump part so and function of casing is to convert kinetic energy of water into pressure energy before it's entered to the delivery pipe so because of movement of this impeller the water energy gets converted into kinetic energy and because of there is a casing is such uh, is there so that will increase the pressure of water so kinetic energy gets converted into pressure energy by means of this casing and due to this the water gets delivered from this delivery pipe so there are different types of casing uh, that is used in uh, centrifugal pump one is volute casing second one is vertex casing and third one is casing with guide blades so we'll see this three types of casings one by one so we have three types of casing one is volute casing second one is vertex casing and third one is casing with guide blades now we'll see this first type of casing that is the volute casing so if you see uh, the diagram of volute casing is there so this is the diagram for volute casing so this is this casing is called as a volute casing this casing so it is a volute casing so volute casing is a spiral type of casing and the area of passage increases gradually so that velocity of water gets decreased and the pressure gets increased so if you see the area at this point it is less entry level and the area gets gradually increases so that it will increase the pressure and decrease the velocity okay so the main limitation of this casing because of this uh, the eddies formation will be there now what is meant by eddies eddies means uh, because of rotation of this water by using this vertex so some of the water it get again passes through again this passage and it will forms the eddies okay resistance to flow of liquid from this direction so that eddies formation will cause the loss of energy okay so because of this a uh, vertex casing a uh, volute casing in is not generally used because of eddies formation so this is a first type of casing for a uh, volute casing now we have another type of casing it is called as a vertex casing so in volute casing there is a limitation it will forms the eddies now this eddies formation it will be eliminated by using a vertex casing and for vertex casing we employ this circular chamber so this chamber is circular in nature so in this type there is a spiral here there is a circular chamber so because between impeller and casing there is a circular chamber and because of this uh, the eddies formation it can be eliminated 
so the efficiency of this vertex casing is more than that of the volute casing why because loss of energy is not there because of heat formation so this is the second type of uh, method it is called as a uh, vertex casing okay so this is the diagram for vertex casing and we have third type of casing that is casing with guide vents so this is third type of casing that is casing with guide vents so this is the impeller part and this part is of casing so it consists of these guide vents also so these are the guide vents so along the periphery of casing these are the guide vents are there so casing with guide blades allows water enter into this guide blade without shock so water gets enter through this guide blade without shock so if we lose the water by this vortex action it will having shock to this casing in case of vortex or in case of volute casing but in case of casing with guide blades the water gets guided through this guide vents to which casing without the shock now uh, guide blades works as a diffuser it works as a diffuser part of uh, this centrifugal pump since the area of guide blade increases which converts the kinetic energy into a pressure energy okay now this are the casing part so first we have seen uh, the impeller part now we have casing part so in casing there are different types of casing one is uh, vertex casing volute casing and casing with pumps now next part in the centrifugal pump it is the suction pipe so a pipe whose one end is connected to the inlet on the pump that is nothing but the eye of the impeller and other end is dips into water in a sump that pipe is known as inlet pipe or it is also called as suction pipe now we have another component uh no i will explain where that suction pipe is there so if you see in working principle diagram this is the suction pipe so one end is connected to this eye of impeller or inlet of the pump and other end is dipped inside the water in a sump so this is this pipe is called as a suction pipe now we have a next component that is foot valve so a foot valve it is a non return type of valve so in this diagram uh, both foot valve and strainer is there so this valve is there so that valve is called as a foot valve and this part is called as a strainer part so foot wall is a non return type of wall which is fitted at the lower end of suction pipe so if you see it is fitted at the lower end of suction pipe so this both foot wall as well as this strainer it is fitted at this end so this is the pipe so at this lower end the foot wall is fitted and below foot wall there is a strainer so uh, the foot wall is opens only in upward direction so foot wall is open only this in upward direction when water flows in downward direction it will not open okay so it allows water to flow in only one direction that is in upward direction so that type of wall is called as a foot wall and it is a non return type of wall now we have another part that is called as strainer so strainer is also fitted at the lower end of this suction pipe that is below this foot wall and it works as a filter okay so this strainer is well uh, works as a filter so the impurities in water is does not allow to go pass through this uh, inside the pump using this suction pipe so it is acts as a filter 
in the centrifugal pump. And the last part is the delivery pipe. So the delivery pipe, it is nothing but the pipe whose one end is connected to the outlet of the pump. So from this, the delivery pipe goes on. So if you see one end is connected to the outlet of this pump and other end is connected to the supply at some height where we have to deliver the water, that pipe is known as a delivery pipe. So this is the construction and working principle of uh, centrifugal pump. Now there are different advantages and disadvantages of this centrifugal pump. So advantages are there, small is in size, cost is less, capital cost or initial cost is less. Then this pump is easy for maintenance. Then it deals with large volume, so volume of water. It can be large, then it can be works for a low or medium heat also. So if height is very low or medium, we can use this centrifugal type of pump. And uh, this pump, it can be works with medium to low viscous fluid. So some oil having some viscosity that can be also pumped by using this centrifugal pump. Now disadvantages is uh, there is maybe a damage because of overheating. Then it does not allow the misalignment. That is electric motor shaft and the pump shaft should be aligned to an axial axis, uh, to an axis. So there is no misalignment between electric motor shaft and uh, centrifugal pump shaft should be there. Then uh, the seals or wear rings, they are need to replace timely. Then it cannot be workable for high head. So small head and medium head, we use this centrifugal pump. So for high head, we have to use a reciprocating type of pump or other type of pump. And also it cannot deals with high viscous or high viscous fluids. So it will deals with only medium or low viscous fluid. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of centrifugal. Now we will see another type of pump that is called as a reciprocating pump. So centrifugal pump, it is a rotodynamic pump. Uh, it will, the water gets flow along the periphery of the impeller. Now in reciprocating pump, the pump is works on a principle of reciprocating action. So in centrifugal pump, the transportation of energy from mechanical to hydraulic, it is done by the rotating action of impeller. But in case of reciprocating, this energy transportation that is from mechanical to hydraulic is done by using a reciprocating action of piston. So here, rotating action of impeller is there. Here, rotating action of piston. So in a reciprocating pump, the rotary motion of crankshaft. So this is the crank. And this crank is connected to crankshaft. So this crank is rotating. So this rotating motion of the crankshaft is converted into a reciprocating. That is to and fro motion of this piston. So it will move this direction and this way, forward direction, backward direction. That is to and fro motion of this piston will be there. So in reciprocating pump, the rotary motion of this crank is converted into a reciprocating motion of pump by means of a connecting rod. So this part is called as connecting rod. So this is crank, this is connecting rod, and this part is your piston. So piston will move inside this cylinder in to and fro motion, that is forward motion and backward motion. So the pressure on water is applied by reducing volume by positive displacement method. So this reciprocating pump, it is a positive displacement type of pump. 
so when piston moves in this direction the water from suction pipe uh, the vacuum is created and the water gets enter into this suction pipe and it will fill this cylinder when piston is at this end now once the water is fully uh, filled then it will the this piston will move in this direction and now when water is fully filled inside the cylinder this suction wall gets closed and it will pressurize the water by reducing the volume so volume of this cylinder goes on decreasing when piston moves from this side to this side and that will pressurize the water and that because of this pressure head it will open this delivery valve and the pressure with pressure the water gets delivered to delivery valve to delivery pipe okay so this is the uh, working principle behind this uh, reciprocating pump now uh, what are the different parts of this reciprocating pump instead of casing and impeller in case of centrifugal pump we have these four parts that is piston or it is also called as a plunger part so this is a piston then we have a cylinder so this part is your cylindrical part or a cylinder then a connecting rod so this is the connecting rod which connects the crank with piston and last part is crank and crankshaft so this is the crank which is a rotating part that connected with the crankshaft and this crankshaft is connected with the electric motor so other part that is suction pipe suction wall delivery pipe delivery wall these are same as that of centrifugal pump then uh, similarly we have foot wall and strainer these all parts are same only in centrifugal force we have use impeller and uh, casing and here we use a reciprocating motion or reciprocating action of pump now we will see uh, the working behind this the suction pipe is again suction and delivery pipe they are connected to the cylinder through using one way wall that is called as a non returning wall so there are two types of reciprocating action will be there one is single acting reciprocating pump and another one is double acting reciprocating pump so here there is a single acting reciprocating pump is there here there is a double acting reciprocating pump. so in single acting reciprocating pump the suction pipe or suction will be takes place at only one side and delivery will be takes place at other side but in case of double acting the suction will be takes place at both end at this end also and at this end also and delivery will be again takes place at both end this end and this end and both delivery pipe is connected to one common pipe so we'll see the working of this single acting reciprocating cylinder so in single acting reciprocating pump the piston moves towards right so first the piston moves towards right now in this condition this crank will move from this end to this end that is 0 to 180 degree so this is the 0 degree and this is the 180 degree so at 0 to 180 degree the piston moves from this end left end towards the this right end and the small vacuum is created inside the cylinder because piston will move in this right hand side because of that vacuum is created inside the cylinder and due to this vacuum the suction valve pushed up and the water enters through this suction pipe 
इनटू सिलेंडर सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट एक्शन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ सक्शन स्ट्रोक नाउ वेन पिस्टन मूव Towards left, it is right. Not right. It is towards left. So when piston will move towards left side, from right to left, that is crank is again rotating from this one eighty degree to three sixty degree. So in this condition, this piston will move from right hand side to left hand side. And in this condition, a suction valve is closing, and delivery valve opens. because of high pressure so when the piston moves from right to left it will reduces the volume of the liquid or water inside this pump or cylinder and because it reduces the volume the pressure gets increased and due to high pressure head the delivery valve gets open and the water is the pressurized water gets pass through this delivery head a uh, delivery pipe so thus the water forced into delivery pipe and the water is raised to required height by using this uh reciprocating pump pulse so all other components is same for a uh, double acting reciprocating pump only difference is that when piston is moved from this end to this end any of action will be there it will uh the water gets inside the cylinder it will pressurize and delivery will be there similarly for another stroke the suction from this side will be there and it will compressed and the water will again pressurize to this wall this delivery pipe and it will pass to the final delivery pipe so in double acting during this movement that is from left to right also and from right to left also both uh, action there will be a suction will be takes place and at same time delivery will be takes place so this is the double acting reciprocating pump now what are the application of pump uh, we have seen Uh, main two types of pump one is centrifugal pump and another one is reciprocating pump it may be a single acting the reciprocating pump or it may be a double acting reciprocating pump now there are different application of this pump so the main application is pumping of the water that is that required for irrigation for domestic use or for industrial use that is the pumping second one is in aquarium or pond filtering also we required pump then in case of automobile the water cooling system will be there and fuel injection system so for that we required again a pump then in case of oil and gas industries for pumping of oil and gas we required uh, this pump also in case of cooling tower as in steam power plant or thermal power plant or nuclear power plant the cooling water is circulating through the condenser and through the cooling tower so again we required a pump then uh, the pump have also there use in uh, waste water recycling then pulp and paper and in also in chemical industries then pump is also used in fire fighting stations so these are the applications of pump so this is about uh, all about the energy conversion device that is the pump so this is uh, the video where we have seen so what is been by pump what are the different types of pumps then what is the construction working of uh, centrifugal pump and reciprocating pumps so thank you for watching this video and also uh, subscribe to my channel so that you get more videos on this subject on or this unit also thank you thank you for listening